judgment in the appeals, Benedetti and Suarez. Lord Clark will give the judgment. In this appeal, the Supreme Court considers a claim by Mr. Benedetti against Mr. Sawiris and his company, Silo Investments Limited, Silo, for unjust enrichment. In 2002, Mr. Benedetti became aware that NLSPA, the largest enemy e energy rather company in Italy, was contemplating a sale of its subsidiary, Wind, and sought to persuade Mr. Sawiris to invest in its acquisition. In January 2004, Mr. Benedetti and Mr. Sawiris signed a contract called the Acquisition Agreement, under which Wind would be acquired via a new company, Rain, the shares of which would be owned by Mr. Sa Sawiris and Mr. Benedetti, in a ratio of two to one. The negotiations were to be handled by Mr. Benedetti with the support and advice of Mr. Sawiris. Both parties were to use their best endeavours to obtain funding from third parties for the acquisition of wind. Provision was made in the acquisition agreement for Mr. Benedetti to receive remuneration for his services. Messrs. Benedetti and, Mr. and Sawiris, however, were unable to secure sufficient funding from third parties for the acquisition of wind to proceed as, as intended. Mr. Benedetti and various potential third-party investors sought to acquire wind via a newly incorporated company called Weather One. However, one of the potential third-party investors lost interest in that deal, and 99% of the shares in Weather One were transferred to Mr. Sawiris on the 25th of March 2005 via Mr. Benedetti. On the day before that transfer took place, Mr. Benedetti, as a director of Weather One, opportunistically made agreements with his own companies without the knowledge of Mr. Sawiris. One of those agreements, the first brokerage agreement, was made with Mr. Benedetti's service company, ITM. Pursuant to the first brokerage agreement, which was dated 24th March 2005, Weather One appointed ITM to provide brokerage services in return for a payment of about 87 million euros, which was 0.7% of the ultimate cost of the acquisition of wind. It became necessary for the funds for the acquisition of wind to be provided by Mr. Sawiris' uh, silo and two Sawiris' family holding companies. A deal was signed with the assistance of Mr. Benedetti on the 26th of May 2005. NL and its holding company entered into a sale and purchase agreement, the SPA, pursuant to which the majority of the shares in wind were sold to Silo and the holding companies via a company called Weather Italy, of which Mr. Benedetti was a director, for over €3 billion. Euros. The transaction was completed in two stages, on the 11th of August 2005 and 8 February 2006. Mr. Benedetti did not have a beneficial interest in any company which acquired an interest in wind. On the same day as the signing of the SPA, the rights and liabilities of Weather One, including its obligations to ITM under the first brokerage agreement, were transferred to Weather Italy. That was effected by Mr. Benedetti as a director of all three companies without the knowledge of Mr. Sawiris. <clears throat> when he discovered the existence of the first brokerage agreement, Mr. Sawiris believed that the 87 million euro brokerage fee to be paid to ITM was needed in order to, dis to discharge Mr. Benedetti's liabilities to third parties who had assisted in the acquisition of wind. Mr. Sawiris suspected that the sum would be kept by Mr. Benedetti personally and was unhappy about the size of the sum. Mr. Sawiris asked for the brokerage fee to be reduced and in June 2005 suggested a payment of 75.1 million euros. Mr. Benedetti would not agree to that sum. In July 2005, however, an agreement between Weather Italy and ITM the revised brokerage agreement, backdated to 26 May 2005, provided that ITM would receive a brokerage fee of 67 million euros, which was 0.55% of the value of the transaction. That sum was paid to ITM on the 12th of August 2005. Mr. Benedetti brought numerous claims against Mr. Sawiris, Silo and the holding companies, including a claim for unjust enrichment. All of Mr. Benedetti's claims were dismissed, except the unjust enrichment claim, for which at first instance, Mr. Benedetti was awarded 75.1 million euros, 
<coughs> Mr. Saweri's silo and the holding companies were held to be jointly and severally liable for that sum, which was calculated on the basis of the offer made by Mr. Saweri's to Mr. Benedetti in June 2005. The Court of Appeal held that the holding companies had not been unjustly enriched, uh, enriched by any services received from Benedetti, Benedetti and further held that Mr. Sawiris and Silo were jointly and severally liable to Mr. Betty for only 14.52 million euros. That sum was based on the conclusion that the market value of the services provided by Mr. Benedetti to Mr. Sawiris was 36.3 million euros, and Mr. Benedetti had already been paid for 60% of those services, leaving 40% of the 36.3 million euros, namely 14.52 million euros unpaid. The Court of Appeal held that the acquisition agreement and Mr. Sawiris's offer of 75.1 million euros in June 2005 were irrelevant to the calculation of the sum due to Mr. Benedetti. In the Supreme Court, Mr. Benedetti argued that he should be entitled to at least 75.1 million euros. Mr. Sawiris and Silo cross appealed, arguing that Mr. Benedetti was not entitled to anything because they had already fully paid Mr. Benedetti for his services. Mr. Benedetti initially argued that the holding companies were jointly and severally liable with Mr. Sawiris and Silo, but he abandoned that part of his appeal before the hearing. The Supreme Court unanimously dismisses Mr. Benedetti's appeal and allows Mr. Sawiris' cross-appeal, essentially for these reasons. The general principle is that where a restitutionary award is made on the basis of unjust enrichment, it is to be calculated as the value of the benefit received by the defendant at the expense of the claimant. Where the benefit takes the form of services, that will normally be the market value of the services performed. The market value may depend on the personal characteristics of the defendant, such as his buying power in the relevant market. Lord Kerr, Lord Wilson and I suggest that the sum to be awarded to a claimant can in principle be reduced on the basis that the defendant subjectively values the services that he received at less than the market value. This is sometimes known as subjective devaluation. Lord Reed suggests that that is not permissible, and Lord Newberger prefers not to express a concluded view on the issue. That difference of opinion is, however, likely to be significant in very few cases, and indeed in some respects may be more apparent than real. It's unnecessary to resolve the debate for the purposes of this case. We all agree that, save perhaps in exceptional circumstances, it is not, not possible to increase the amount awarded to a claimant on the basis that he valued the services at more than the market price, sometimes called subjective revaluation. On the facts, the acquisition agreement is not relevant to the calculation of what, if any, sum Mr. Sawiris and Silo have to pay Mr. Benedetti. The parties abandoned the acquisition agreement after it proved difficult to find third-party investors. It is not, therefore, appropriate to have regard to that contract in determining the sum, if any, to which Mr. Benedetti is entitled. The trial judge found that Mr. Benedetti performed the role of a broker or advisor, and on that basis, that the market value of the services that he provided was 36.3 million euros. There is no basis for challenging those findings. The Court of Appeal was right to conclude that the judge fell into error in awarding Mr. Benedetti more than the market value of his services, based on Mr. Sawiris's offer in June 2005. That offer is not relevant to the calculation of what, if any, sum Mr. Sawiris and Silo have to play to Mr. Benedetti, because subjective revaluation is not permissible. In any event, the offer of 75.1 million made by Mr. Sawiris in June 2005 did not represent his genu genuine view of the value of Mr. Benedetti's services. The offer was considered by Mr. Sawiris to be generous and was made under the threat of, of threatened litigation. The Court of Appeal was wrong to award Mr. Benedetti 14.52 million euros. The market value of his services was 36.3 million euros. And as the trial judge found, he has already received 67 million euros via ITM. 
the trial judge gave no reason for saying that the payment of 67 million euros related to only 60% of Mr. Benedetti's services, and that conclusion is inconsistent with some of his other conclusions, such as that all of Mr. Benedetti's services fell within the scope of his role as a broker advisor, and that his services would normally be paid, paid for by way of a single payment representing a percentage of the value of the transaction. Further, all Mr. Benedetti's services had been provided before the date on which the revised brokerage agreement was signed. That agreement was expressed to cover services performed by Mr. Benedetti in the past as well as the future, and there were no further services to be performed by him at that date. The payment of 67 million euros therefore covered all the services provided, for, uh, provided by Mr. Benedetti. The uh, order uh, is that the appeal be dismissed and the cross appeal allowed the parties to make written submissions on the precise form of order and on costs by the 29th of July.